Well, we're back in Chicago Union Station today. We are taking off on the Texas Eagle, riding all the way to St. Louis. Just took off from Chicago on the Texas Eagle and they're about to come get our dinner reservations and they gave us this, this menu and we noticed a couple of new things on there and one of them is the garlic and herb cod. So that's new. We've never seen that on the flexible dining plan before so I think Allie's going to get that and see how it is. I haven't had dinner yet but we decided to go ahead and set the room up because we wanted to see what the bed looked like and the beds look pretty big so we're excited to be in this bedroom on the texas eagle and uh getting the room all set up so let's talk give you a, a quick tour here of what the superliner bedroom looks like first off you do get a closet right here store some things in there and then you get the sink area so in a bedroom you are going to get on a superliner a bathroom so you get your own sink soap there's a little even vanity in here with some toilet you where you can put some toiletries and there's even a bit of a counter space here for it you've also got a nice big trash can which is really nice um you know if you're here for a night or two uh, then you've got your seats here and these are going to slide out so you're looking at about 40 inches um, of bed space here now when the bed is folded out you're not going to have a ton of room here to get by to get out of the room but once the bed is made you don't actually have to leave the room so this is nice and comfortable you've got two outlets over here by um, the mirror right here but you also have one right here so you actually get three outlets in this room you control the temperature in here there on that dial and on this side you actually control the speaker system for overhead for announcements and things like that you also get a light on each side so not only do you get all of this seating but you also get this chair here as well um, and you can put the arms down on it if you want to and you have storage space overhead here we have our pillows here but this has a little lip on it which is actually going to hold your stuff in um, overhead here we've got a bed I'll show you here I'm not gonna build the whole thing up at this very second but you'll see here bed folds down quite a bit of space here and you do have a little bit more space here than you would like in a roomette as you uh, probably already heard and you've got stairs that we attach here in order to uh, go up to the upper bunk so there's actually quite a bit of space there for you now we're gonna go into and take a quick look at the bathroom which is a huge bonus so I'm gonna squeeze in here there we go so there's plenty of room in here actually just to move around and shower it's an all-in-one so you've got your commode and your shower you've got a shower head that comes off and you can safely store your towels up here they'll be dry there's a two uh two system here two step system so that you don't accidentally turn it on while you're trying to go to the bathroom and then your toilet paper gets stored under here in order to keep it um, nice and dry so um, that's basically the whole look there it's really nice to have this right here in the room and not have to worry about even leaving the room all night if you need to use the restroom or whatever you're just right here in your bedroom we are rolling quickly through the midwest on the texas eagle and i'm feeling pretty comfortable because <laughs> i am from the midwest i'm showing Allie all about where i was <laughs> raised and 
<laughs> she is learning a lot about it. There's a, a lot of corn fields. Yeah, it's great. We get now I know corn. why you like corn so yeah, much. I really like corn. <laughs> You know, one of the biggest mistakes that you can make on one of these cross-country trains is to not explore the train, to just stay in your room or just stay in your seat if you're in coach. But there's a lot of really uh, good spaces in these, and since we're on the Texas Eagle, it does have the observation car. So we're going to go down and explore that for a minute and take a look around and just kind of move our legs around too. Okay, quick change of plans here on the Texas Eagle. We just talked to the room attendant and there is no observation car attached right now. So he said we're not gonna get that until we get to San Antonio and hook up with the uh, Sunset Limited. So there isn't one from the San Antonio to Chicago uh, portion of the trip apparently. Allie is having to rethink her dinner choice because she wanted to get the cod, but they just came by and said it wasn't available. So what are you thinking now? Um, well, I really want to stick with seafood, so I think I'm going to do the shrimp and lobster sauce, and let's hope for the best. One of the great things that I love about being on Amtrak is that you're not driving, because right now, outside, it is pouring down rain here in Illinois, and I just do not like, and Allie does not like driving in this kind of rain. I'm too old for that anymore. I'm just not going to do that. So if you're on Amtrak, uh, you don't have to worry. Someone else is driving, and I really like that. So you can see behind me the door to our uh, bedroom and through that door is the hallway and the window outside the other side. So if you're in a bedroom, you actually have a view out both sides of the train. Unlike a room at where you have another room at on the other side of the hall. Now it's not the greatest view out of that side of the train, but if something amazing came along and you wanted to jump out there and see it, you could easily do that. So another advantage of the bedroom is you do have your big windows. Uh, inside your cabin, but you can actually see uh, outside the other side without anybody blocking you or being in your way. We do apologize. Unfortunately, we had some bad weather. I don't have a specific time at this point. We will keep you updated and informed if we have any additional information. Conductors will be walking about the train. If you have any questions, please feel free. Okay, so we are uh, stopped here just before our next station at Pontiac because we got a tornado warning ahead of us So we're they're stopping here to keep us safe. So we're just at least we have a cool view here um, Looking out, but uh, we're gonna make the best of it here as we just kind of wait this one out We don't know how long it's gonna be so we'll see what happens Yeah, but I'm not sure being perched above the river is the best place to be <laughs> for the tornado warning But we'll see. I don't think it's gonna be too bad <laughs> you can kind of see. Uh oh, everybody's cell phones are going off for the tornado warning. You can kind of <laughs> see uh, the the little bridge that we're sitting on. Oh. Cafe car, as you heard, is closed. So we're waiting for dinner, which is going to be at uh, five o'clock for us. So should be not too much longer, and we'll be on the move. There are huge trees now floating down the river. <laughs> so, and also, we just saw the room attendant walk by through the, by through the window, and he was wearing like a orange life jacket type thing. So I don't know if he's going out to check the situation, but he was planning on getting wet in just a few minutes. <laughs> if you want to step off, have a quick smoke, get a fresh air, you are able to do so at this time. We ask that you please stay on the platform, listen for the all. They said you can get off and take a smoke so and some fresh air. You want to walk to the center of the... Right, as you can see, it is coming down pretty good out here. Uh, I don't see a tornado yet, but it's 
pretty wet. They let us off here in Pontiac, Illinois for a quick smoke break and fresh air. And uh, yeah, it was really starting to rain. So I'm gonna go back in before I get too wet. Okay, the wind has picked up substantially out there. And uh, I came back inside because it was pretty wet and windy. <laughs> but we are safe here. And that's one of the things that is great about Amtrak is that they always have your safety in mind and they've got people looking ahead to see where the real bad weather is and so they can stop before you get there and that is awesome because when you're driving in a car and you're driving through this you don't really know where you're going you can't tell what's coming up and you drive right into something terrible so uh that was kind of fun to get out and play around in the rain but now i'm just gonna dry off for dinner okay we've waited out the tornado and we are back on the move again no problem. Okay, we're ready for dinner, so all of our food is in this bag. So our attendant, our dining car attendant, is actually also the cafe car attendant. So she's got a really tough job. She's got to manage the cafe and the dining car. So she had to close the cafe to attend to the sleeper car passengers and the dining car. So we've got, she's got all of our food here ready for us, and we're going to dig in because we're hungry. One of the coolest things about the Texas Eagle, in my opinion, is that it is the longest train ride you can do in the United States. Uh, a little bit over 65 hours, uh, we'll be on here for quite a while, maybe an extra hour because of that tornado delay. But I actually think they're gonna make that up because there are stretches of the uh, track where they can go faster than scheduled and make up some of that time. So I think we'll probably get in on time still. We made it to St. Louis. It's raining and the platform has no covering. So we're moving pretty quickly to get up here. All right, so as you saw, we just pulled into St. Louis and we are staying at the Live with Lowe's, which is right across the street from the Cardinal Stadium, St. Louis Cardinal Stadium. So we're gonna give you a quick tour of the room here. Let's check this out. Look at this, we've got a little bar, a little coffee bar with drinks. And you got a little coffee machine right there your ice there is a mini bar area here which is great to see that coming back on the horizon and then we've got a little fridge right here which is great we can throw our drinks in there we usually have some with us so that'll be great we've got a closet right here and it's got a little safe and you've got ironing board and all that kind of good stuff if you're the kind of person who irons things on vacation 
And then we're gonna go right into the bathroom here. Great looking shower, nice tiled, um, and they do provide some nice toiletries there uh, with shampoo, conditioner, and a bar of soap. And then right here, hey, and then right here, you got a nice sink area. I love that there's a lot of space on both sides because we always, you know, since we always have all our stuff with us, we need space to put all of our things. So that's the bathroom. It's a pretty good size and it does have a sliding door. So that's nice. This is quiet, um, not too noisy. Walk into the room part here. Nice and spacious, really. Um, wide room, much bigger than the ones we've been staying in in the last few cities, so it's kind of nice. I do love all the baseball themed everything in the hotel. You'll see this throughout the entire hotel. Again, we are directly across the street from the stadium. And then you've got Rob's favorite, nice big TV. <laughs> we won't be watching the game on the TV though because we'll be watching it live in just a couple of days. Um, and you've got a seating, a chair to sit here, a chair here, and you've got a desk area, which is great for editing our videos. Again, that baseball themed artwork they've got going here with the arch in the background here and the Cardinals flag there. And then um, a nice chair to sit here comfortably. So I could actually sit here and edit some videos or just kind of hang out and watch a movie or whatever. And then you've got a really pretty view here out the window. You do have to pay extra if you want to be on the side with the stadium and the arch, but you can see in the distance right there, um, which is the Ferris wheel that they have downtown. So we are on the eighth floor, which is fantastic because um, we actually get to see over this parking garage here. If you're below that, then you're going to be looking right into the parking garage. So it's very nice to be able to have that option. The front desk was very helpful. They are really full this weekend um, because they've got not just the games, but the gymnastics Olympic trials are going on um, just down the street. And so it's been really busy. It's packed. Um, we can already tell from the, the lobby downstairs and the restaurants that they have going. So we are excited to explore here and head to the arch to check that off of our national park list. And we're also gonna be checking off another ballpark. So stay with us so that you can see what else we have up our sleeves. We're staying right here in Ballpark Village. Now the ball field is here. You can go this way and head to the Gateway Arch and our hotel is right there. So literally when we go to the game tomorrow, we're just gonna walk out and walk right across the street and the stadium is right there. So this is a great area to be in. We're excited to be here and we're having a good time. But not experienced on the field. They really just empty. Just on together So there's a couple of places where you want to stay, stop and take pictures. One of them is this SL for St. Louis, the St. Louis sign right outside the stadium, which is right there. And then right over here, you can see the ginormous trophy. I mean, it's not the real one, but it's a really cool one. We're going to go look at that. So the other place that I've seen something like this is on the Mag Mile in Chicago for the Cubs. So if you get a chance, make sure you pop over here and grab a picture in front of the trophy. Bridge every 10 minutes. There's always one coming across the bridge right now in front of us. 
Now the freight trains no longer use the bridge, not because of its age. These rail cars have gotten bigger and bigger, they will not fit underneath this bridge anymore. So it's a perfect fit for that light rail system. Now the second bridge out of this here is the Dr. Martin Luther King Memorial Highway Bridge. It dates back to 1952, it was then called the Veterans Bridge, and then later renamed the Outer Civil Rights Leader. Now that bridge does mark about the northernmost boundary of the original city of St. Louis. The original city consists of where the arch grounds are today, and this little piece of land off the left was between the bridges known as the Clades Landing. Now the landing over here gives you a good snapshot of what old St. Louis looked like. All the old brick warehouses, the cobblestone streets, it's pretty much where the arch grounds look like from the arch was built. All these old warehouses are broken down the roof front to store up the goods coming off the steamboats. This area here has been renovated into restaurant bars, offices, and apartments. Now this bridge right out in front of us here is the Interstate 70 Highway Bridge. Now Interstate 70 had run on a bridge for the south and harbor for many years. It was getting quite congested. They built this new bridge here to help ease that congestion. You baseball fans might recognize the official name of the bridge. It's a Stan Usual Veterans Memorial Bridge. Finished off in 2014. It's a Cable State Bridge. There's 1,500 feet of clearance between the piers. They're 400 feet tall and all those cables help support the building. Well, it's official. We have actually now can check off Gateway National Park off our list. You really don't appreciate how enormous this thing is until you're standing underneath it and you feel like an ant. All right, we had an amazing time in St. Louis. Got to see a ball game, the Gateway Arch, so many great things, but we are headed on to Kansas City now. But we got to the train station, the Gateway Station, and they said there was so much water on the tracks to Kansas City that the train can't go. We were supposed to be on the Missouri River Runner, but they have arranged a bus for us to get there. So a little change of plans. We are going to be riding a bus to KC. We'll see how that is. It's a charter bus, not a Greyhound bus or a through bus. So I don't know how it's going to differ, but we're going to hop on board, see what that's like. And uh, incidentally, if you are coming to St. Louis, there is a Union Station here, which is a, a big grand station that was uh, in 1894, the largest train station in the country, but that is not in use anymore. In the 70s, Amtrak moved from there over to this gateway station because it was cheaper and there weren't enough trains to justify that one. So that has now been renovated into a hotel, aquarium, and there's a Ferris wheel right back here. It's just a few blocks away, but if you're coming into St. Louis, you're gonna be at this gateway station. So our bus is coming in, we're gonna hop on and head over to KC. All right, so we paid $58 for our tickets, which were actually business class seats. And of course, there's not gonna be business class seats on the bus, on this uh, coach bus. So they did give us a refund of $44. So that's kind of nice that they gave us that and still gave us access to the first class lounge.
first stop, Kirkwood. Somehow we made it here before the bus in front of us, so there's some confusion as to who's going to get on and off because the other bus is apparently not here yet. <laughs> Okay, we are back on the highway after a quick stop in Kirkwood. And the cool thing was, I think we just saw some Route 66 signs, so I think we might have been on that for a minute. So, back on the highway to KC, should be there in about three hours. We're about an hour from Kansas City and we stopped at a rest area here uh, for a 20 minute break so everyone is getting off to uh, get some food, vending machines, use the facilities, take a little walk so not bad so far, hour to go, we should be in Kansas City shortly. The worst part about this whole situation is that there was really no uh, planning for food so we don't have a really anything for dinner with us. It's been about a five and a half hour ride and there's nothing available on the bus. So uh, tonight it looks like it's gonna be Ritz Bits for dinner and we do have a Coke and we had uh, a couple of boxes of uh, uh, pop charts. So kind of an eclectic dinner, but it'll make do for tonight. introduce my team here. We have a team of over 68 professionals who travel from all across America. We're stationed in Nellis Air Force Base in Las Vegas, Nevada. You should go check it out sometime. It's a nice town. But if you do get the chance to go to the air show this weekend, what you're going to see is pride and professionalism to a degree that you have never witnessed before. We pride ourselves in committing ourselves to excellence in everything that we do. That's what this country deserves and that's what this team delivers. So if you do get the chance to come see our demonstration this weekend or the Navy Blue Angels. I think you're going to be impressed and you're going to be proud at what this country is capable of. All right, uh, good evening Kansas City. I'll tell you what, it is absolutely awesome to be up in the Midwest and after a tough year in 2020 uh, with the pandemic to, to be able to come out here and share this 4th of July weekend with you. And not only the air show, but this festival is going to be one of those things that uh, we all take uh, take home with us. And the hospitality we've had here uh, since we've arrived in Kansas City has been uh, incomparable. Probably no surprise to you. For some of our team, uh, before I talk a little bit more about the Blue Angels and the Navy and the Marine Corps, I'd like to give a shout out to some of our teams, more our Kansas natives on the team. We got to...
So you probably can't see it, but this little building right here um, is Jack's stack. I'm excited to try that out. And this building here is the Union Station. So it's pretty close. So you just have to walk this little bridge, go down the stairs, and we'll be right there. Okay, we got our order. I tell you what, that is one busy restaurant. It was crazy in there. The wait uh, right now, it is 4th of July, so it's a holiday weekend, but the wait for a take home order, which is what we got to bring back to the train station, is one hour, which is wild. I can't imagine how long the wait is to try to eat in there. But anyways, we're gonna walk this over nice and convenient. It smells amazing. So we'll tell you what it's like after we try it out. Okay, so Allie just brought back the uh, barbecue from Casey and it looks pretty amazing. So uh, I'm gonna see how this tastes and you know, if we recommend you do this when you're in Kansas City. Okay, this is some of the best barbecue you'll get. So if you're in Kansas City, you need to get barbecue. So if you're at the Amtrak station, definitely walk over and pick some of this up and bring it back to the station and eat it because it's better than anything you're gonna find here at the station. It's about nine o'clock here in Kansas City and we have been here most of the day because the Southwest Chief takes off at 10.42. So have about another hour so we've been exploring the city. There is a really cool uh, KC light rail that is free. You take that about a mile or two up into the downtown area, which is really cool to do. But uh, they've got the Union Station all lit up red, white, and blue for 4th of July, which is today. So we're gonna go hop on and try the Southwest Chief. Okay guys, we're excited. We are on another leg here of our trip all across the country and we're excited to bring you guys along. Southwest Chief, we just got to our, our room at and we're trying to get on kind of quietly because there might be people sleeping. Although it is 4th of July <laughs> Not with the fireworks. and there are fireworks outside. <laughs> so hopefully we can see them as we roll out of town. They might still be going. But the cool, one of the cool things was they gave us the menu for the morning uh, and lunch and dinner. And it is traditional dining on this train. So we're going to be bringing that to you tomorrow. Went to bed in Kansas last night, woke up in Colorado. We are stopped for about an hour almost, which is a pretty long break. I think they're switching out some crew maybe, but a lot of people are walking into town behind me to get breakfast. It is breakfast time here, but we are gonna go get the traditional uh, dining breakfast on board the train in a few minutes. Be our first time there. So a uh, nice little stop here in, in Colorado much longer than uh, most time when you stop just for a fresh air break. They've got a really cool mural here in Colorado signifying the Southwest Chief. Uh, they've got uh, Chicago to LA and the name of the city and Amtrak right, right on the side of the building. Okay, so uh, we're gonna head over to breakfast and grab that, but something really weird happened. Um, I, I, me, I overslept. Rob had to wake me up. He got up before I did, so I'm not quite uh, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, but we're gonna <laughs> 
head over and um, grab some breakfast. And traditional dining is back, so um, we're going to be doing traditional dining for our breakfast. So we'll see what's available. I haven't had even a chance to look at it because literally I just got up and trying to decide what to have for breakfast before we head over so here are the choices you can do a continental breakfast which is um, like mixed berries a croissant a Greek yogurt um, you can have your choice of assorted cereals um, oatmeal or grits then there's the Amtrak signature railroad French toast and that's just like thick cut French toast with whipped cream and some seasonal berries on top then there is the three egg omelet and on that one you have your choice of cheddar or Swiss on top and then they also you can have vegetables on top which is uh, peppers and onions and that's served with potatoes breakfast potatoes and a croissant and then there's the scrambled eggs which you can add again your choice of cheddar or Swiss um, and tomatoes and red and green peppers and onions you can mix any of those that you want in there because they are made to order which is really amazing um, and then that's also served with breakfast potatoes and a croissant and then they also have um, some sides of meat choices as well if you would like that they have the hardwood smoked bacon and you get three pieces they have the breakfast pork sausage link you get two and chicken sausage links you get two so um, from this list I'm sure you're thinking you're deciding what you're gonna pick I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna get and then we'll see what Rob wants to get so I think I like that three egg omelet, that sounds good. It sounds like a lot of food, um, but that sounds good. I like an omelet over scrambled eggs. I don't know why. Um, so I think I'm gonna do that. And I think I'm gonna get the chicken sausage links because that sounds really good. Um, so what are you gonna get, Rob? I am definitely gonna get the railroad French toast. I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> I knew he was gonna say that. When I read it, I said, he's gonna pick the French toast because he loves French toast. And I'm gonna get the <laughs> the pork sausage and the sausage yes so that's what we're gonna get so we're gonna head on over there um, to breakfast and we're gonna put in our order and we'll sit there and they'll have the full table service and we're gonna bring you guys along with us so you guys can experience it too Thank you. Did you catch up for your potatoes? Uh, no, I'm, I'm good. Thank you. I got the chicken sausage. I'll show you what it looks like. And it's actually very good, so I would highly recommend that too. Okay, wow. Um, such a different experience that, than um, what we've been having uh, on the trains with the quickie breakfast. Um, this is absolutely amazing to have the table service. Uh, first of all, they bring your drinks in the cups already so they don't bring you the bottle and a cup they already serve it in the cup for you which i thought was really nice you have real silverware ah! um and their amtrak plates as well so that was great the food was amazing it was really good and it was actually a lot of food as i had anticipated <laughs> but it was delicious um and it was a really cool experience what did you think about yours rob 
Yeah, I thought that the, the food was really good. It kind of compared for me, like, being on a cruise ship and going into the main dining room for breakfast, which you can do sometimes, uh, that quality of food. So much higher service than the biscuit that you normally have been getting with the traditional dining. Uh, the other thing that I thought was interesting about it was they said that you might be sharing a table with someone else, but from what we could tell, nobody was sharing any tables and there were actually open tables and the train is pretty full so I think they've been working a long enough time frame to, to fit everybody in so we'll see what happens next because our next meal is at two o'clock we signed up for the late lunch because we had the late uh, breakfast so I think it'll probably be just the two of us at a table again we'll see okie dokie well um, it is lunchtime <laughs> So, uh, here are the choices for lunch for the new traditional menu. Um, so we're looking at, they have a Caesar salad. It's a classic Caesar salad with the romaine and um, they, for, they add grape tomatoes to it, which is interesting. Um, and then shaved Parmesan. And if you would like to have some protein with it, you can add a uh, roasted chicken breast to that, which is really nice. That sounds lovely. Um, there's also artisan grilled cheese. It's oven roasted turkey. Um, bacon, provolone, and cheddar cheeses on hickory smoked onion bread. And then they're going to serve that with taro chips and coleslaw. Ooh, that sounds pretty good too. Mm, this is getting tougher. Uh, then the next one is the natural Angus burger. It's an Angus beef burger and it's uh, you can have cheddar or Swiss on it. Um, lettuce, tomato on a brioche roll and then they serve that with a side of chips and coleslaw as well. Or um, this is the, the vegetarian option, also gluten-free, is the savory chili, which is a vegan chili served with, you can either get it the chili in a baked potato or in a bowl if you don't want the baked potato. And then you could have your choice of toppings of cheddar cheese, bacon, sour cream, and scallions. And with lunch, you also get a choice of dessert from the menu, from the dinner menu, so you can have dessert at lunch and dessert at dinner. Hmm. Um, so the dessert choices are a flourless chocolate tort, Philadelphia cheesecake, or carrot cake. Boy, there's a lot of good choices for food. But for lunch, I think I'm leaning towards, I think I'm going to do the savory chili in the baked potato. Um, with all the toppings and I'm gonna ask him but I already know what he's gonna say what are you gonna have Rob what do you think I'm gonna have you're going to have without a doubt the Angus burger of course <laughs> <laughs> with, with no tomato and no lettuce and cheesecake <laughs> and cheesecake got it perfect so that's what we're gonna order for lunch um, so let's head over there grab that lunch we'll bring you guys along and we'll see what that's like air break so I'm gonna run over here and take a quick picture of the sign it's kind of cool looking
All right, it's crew change time, which means we get an extra long fresh air break, which is great because we can walk around. We are in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and this is actually uh, one of the Route 66 cities you can get to on Amtrak. Um, next will be in Gallup, which is another city as well. And then on from there, we'll be uh, also heading, uh, you can get to Tucumcari also, which is not too far, but it's not right on the Amtrak line. And and then later on tonight, we'll be in Arizona. Uh, we'll be in Winslow, and you can go and stand on the corner in Winslow, Arizona. Um, and you can also get to um, Williams, no, Flagstaff, and you can get to Williams from Flagstaff. And then on from there, you can also go to Kingman, which is really fun. If you have a long break there, you can run across the street to Mr. D's and grab something really yummy to eat. Otherwise, if you do have extra time or if you're staying in town there, you can also go to the Route 66 Museum, which is not very far from the station there. So uh, lots of really cool things you can do on the Southwest Chief. One of the things that I think is uh, very important to Amtrak is the safety of, for the passengers and of their trains. And this is also one of those breaks where um, the mechanics come out and take a close look at the train. Um, I see them up there on the platform with light, with their flashlights looking in underneath um, as they're waiting for the, the crew to change out. So I think that's really great that um, they're out here taking care of us, looking out for us and looking out for those around us. We're just hanging out here in Albuquerque waiting for that nice long fresh air break that we have here. And we just had lunch actually and it was delicious, right? It was really good. Yes, so uh, if you recall, Rob had the hamburger. I did. Um, with came, it came with what, the Terra chips? Coleslaw. Um, coleslaw and some veggies on the side. It was good. Yeah, it was, it was a really good burger, mm -hmm. kind of a premium burger, better mm -hmm. than Definitely better than fast food. Mm -hmm. Way better than the Amtrak Cafe burger. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> uh, so yeah, if you're looking to get a burger on a train, that's the best you're gonna do. And the coleslaw was really tasty. Coleslaw was good. Mm -hmm. And I had the uh, vegetarian vegan dish um, on the potato option, which was the chili on the potato, and it was really, really tasty. It had a very mild kick to it. I wouldn't say it was spicy, but it had it was a nice kick to it, and I got it with all the the toppings on it. It was very very good. And then we also decided we would um, take a few bites of some dessert too. Yeah, we had to try them all. <laughs> well, we will by tonight. So <laughs> there's I only had, three. So. I had the cheesecake. <laughs> yes. And it was really good cheesecake, and they did. Uh, chocolate and caramel drizzle on top of mm -hmm. it. Could've well, they didn't do both. She said, we have chocolate and we have caramel. Which one would you like? And what did you say? I said both. Yeah, so he got both. Yeah, uh, he did both. <laughs> or you could have got strawberries. <laughs> yes, um, and I had the carrot cake and it was really good carrot cake. And I am very picky about carrot cake. So I always go in super skeptical on carrot cake, but this one was really good, nice and moist. And the cream cheese uh, frosting on it was really good. Yeah, so tonight we'll be getting the chocolate torque because that's the only yeah. one left. Well, I think I might try the cheesecake tonight. Okay. See but I don't know if I'm going to get both of them. <laughs> We'll see. in a Superliner 2 roomette. So let's take a look at this one, guys. We've got our two seats, just like you would expect in your roomette, and that becomes your lower berth or your lower bunk bed. And the mattress we store up above, gets stored up here, and you just bring it down here. Now you've got your tray table right here. You can pull that out, flips out, and you have a nice table for the two of you to use while you're in here. Here you've got your push to call button to call your attendant. You can turn the lights overhead on and off right here. 
music control here actually is referring to the announcements that you hear overhead. So if the conductor is speaking or the dining car or your attendants trying to get a hold of everybody in the sleeper car, they would make announcements. But you can turn this off so that you don't hear it um, in your room or you can turn it down so that it's not as loud in your room and you can um, adjust that however you want. I like it all the way off. We like it all the way off and we can usually hear it from the hallway anyways with no problems and a reading light right there. Now on this side, you gotta take note that you only have one outlet here. So if you have more than one thing to charge, it's best to bring those little cubes um, that you can plug in several uh, USB uh, items into and plug there. We have one that has two and one that has four. So whatever we need, plug that in and then we can charge everything at once. Here, we've got the thermostat gauge. Now it doesn't change the temperature a ton, but it does a little bit especially when you turn it all the way to the warmer. So just know that it's not gonna be a drastic change, but it is gonna change the, the temperature a little bit. You got another reading light right here. Here, you've got this little storage area that's right off of this, um, this chair here, this seat. And then you've got a little uh, armrest here, but then here you also have storage as well. That's actually where I keep my toiletries down in there. And then if you wanna hang some things, you can lock those in with this belting system here to keep them from dangling all over the place and you've got a couple of little cubbies up here that are actually going to be used up above by Rob in his suite so let's pull this down here show you real quick what this looks like you've got uh, the bed up here and it's gonna be a little bit smaller and narrower uh, width wise than um, the one down below. The one down below is 28 inches. This one's a little bit narrower than that one at 25. Now, this netting here is where Rob keeps his things. You get his headphones, his phone, snacks, things like that. And then this one does have the netting like they all do up above um, to make sure that you don't <laughs> fall out of your bed. And the, the big question is always, how do you get up there? Well, these are the steps right here. So these steps we use as storage during the day, but at night I move my big bag <laughs> um, and store it underneath my bed and Rob can use these as a step, no obstruction, all the way up to his bed. Yep, it's time to eat again. So this time we're choosing dinner and it's a three course meal. Um, you do get this served with uh, one complimentary alcoholic beverage per person per ride. So. Uh, we'll be doing that at dinner um, or you can have complimentary soft drinks um, juices and of course water throughout the duration of the ride um, choices for the appetizers are lobster crab cake um, green chili cheese tamale or mixed green salad with baby brie Ooh, those all sound good um, then the entrees um, the entrees so you can also substitute lighter versions of this from the lunch menu as well if you want something a little bit lighter for, for dinner but here are the, the options they've got the Amtrak signature flat iron steak um, and that's eight ounce black Angus steak and um, it's served with a sauce with baby greens and carrots um, and you can either choose a baked potato or cheddar polenta to go with that um, they also have the pan roasted chicken breast and um, that comes with risotto with English be peas, fava beans, carrots, and that's all in a mushroom sauce. Then they have the grilled Atlantic salmon and that's served on ancient grains with green beans and carrots and then a sauce on that. And then they also have um, tortellini with pesto cream and it's tricolor cheese tortellini um, with let's see grape tomatoes English peas in that pesto cream sauce and then they put the Parmesan on top and you can add chicken to that one as well um, if you would like to uh, and then I mentioned the desserts earlier when we had lunch it was the flourless chocolate tort the Philadelphia cheesecake and the carrot cake so lots of choices here but I think um, I'm a big seafood person I love seafood so it's probably easy to figure out which ones I'm gonna get lobster crab cake I'm gonna get for my appetizer um, for dinner I'm definitely gonna get the grilled salmon and then for dessert I think I'm gonna try the carrot cake what are you gonna get Rob 
Yes, so I'm not a seafood person. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna get the tamale. Okay, that sounds about right. I'm gonna get the steak. Obviously. With the baked potato. Okay. And I'm gonna get the chocolate twerk. Ooh, all of that sounds good. Awesome. Well, we're off to dinner. We'll let you guys know how it is. Everything adds up now. Okay. Okay. Um, so I think I'm gonna do. The, can I do the lobster crab cake? It's an appetizer. Is that good? Yes. Okay. Awesome. And then I think for my entree, I'm gonna go with the grilled Atlantic salmon. And then one day we want to drink. And then yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And then I think for dessert I'll do the cheesecake. Do so you want like any uh, chocolate caramel dressing? Mm -hmm. Let's do caramel. Huh? That sounds good. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Tamale, yes, mm -hmm. for the appetizer. I skipped right over that. <laughs> I like the tamale for the appetizer uh, okay. and the steak for the dinner. And how would you like your steak cut? Uh, medium. Would you like the baked potato or the, the tamale? Baked potato, please. <laughs> I told him it was good for lunch. Yes. <laughs> it looked good. <laughs> and are you you're gonna get? I I like the. Uh, the chocolate tour. Can I have your room number, please? Two. No, that's a two. Three, three, one. I should know that by now, right? Alright. Awesome. Thank you. Did you say it was coming up soon? When I went to sleep, it was better than the bed. How about you all? Mm, oh, great. <laughs> She's smiling really good. <laughs> Uh, no, I think that's good. I'm excited about dessert after. <laughs> Thank you. Thank great. you. I'll be back. We got to do it. We're on the side. And they're letting them get a good flight. No, you're going out. There's no other train. We'll probably have to jump on mules and then we'll go get in our bus or something. Yeah. All right, we're back from dinner and wow, it was so good. Um, I did go with the lobster um, cake and I went with uh, the salmon for dinner. So like an all seafood <laughs> fest for me. And then I ended up getting the cheesecake for dessert as well with caramel sauce on it and it was really good the um, lobster cake was really moist and it was on a bed of like farro it was so so good and the salmon was nice and juicy the sauce was fantastic and it was on a bed of ancient greens and some veggies really delicious really filling meal um, and that cheesecake wow <laughs> I mean you can't go wrong with cheesecake can you um, but I had a great time the traditional dining was absolutely fantastic loved the table service we had um, a, a great attendant in the dining car dorothy hi dorothy thank you for your awesome work on the southwest southwest chief rob tell us a little bit about your meal i had the steak which was really good I ordered it uh, medium and it was cooked just how i wanted it had a baked potato with it which was also very good and then for dessert I had the chocolate tart, which we hadn't had yet, but it was really rich, really amazing. And uh, yeah, I just think that the, the dining experience overall was great and very similar to what you get on a cruise ship. So that's kind of what I was looking for, judging it against. A few logistical items on the traditional dining. The first is that breakfast is first come, first serve, and lunch and dinner are by reservation only. Now they are all only open to sleeper car passengers 
the coach car passengers are not yet able to go up there. So because of that, there also is no price. So there's no set price for any of the meals. They're all just included with your sleeper car accommodations. And then as far as tipping, uh, there now also are two attendants. And so you'll be tipping probably a little bit more than you were for the uh, flex dining because they are doing table service, doing a great job, and it's providing an amazing experience. One last thing I wanted to mention about this Southwest Chief was how much it costs. And we paid about $820 for this, and but we didn't go the whole way. We went from Kansas City to LA, and we got it a little bit ahead of time. So you can expect anywhere from 700 to well over 1,000, depending on how far you're going, how many people are going, and what time of year it is. All right, so the room attendants came around and just took the order, and. They said they're offering dessert, but I said I haven't moved enough yet today to eat dessert. So I said I've taken 400 steps today. She said if I take a thousand on this train somehow in the next 10 minutes, she's gonna bring me two desserts. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> I'm going right now. All right, I made it. I was successful. A thousand steps. <laughs> So you've earned dessert or lunch? Or I have, I've at least kept my lunch. <laughs> I don't know about dessert yet. <laughs> All right guys, so it is, what time is it? It's 10.30 um, and we are still on the train. We were supposed to <laughs> arrive in LA Union Station at about 8 a.m. But um, right before we got into Winslow, we had uh, engine trouble and they ended up having to switch those out. Uh, unfortunately, it took a little bit longer than they had planned to make that switch and to get everything all set to continue our journey that some of the crew actually uh, timed out, the conductors and the engineers. So in order to not get a fine, they did have to completely stop the train until they were able to make the crew, the appropriate crew change. So we are still on the train. You can see <laughs> uh, California here going past me, but we're expected to get in in just a couple more hours. The nice thing is um, our attendants and dining car crew have been absolutely fantastic and keeping us um, informed and still feeding us, which is really nice. That's two more meals than they had planned on, um, and they've been really good at kind of organizing all of that and just uh, keeping us, like I said, informed and um, giving us anything that we need while we're here. Plus, bonus, we did get to sleep in this morning instead of having to get up at like 6.30 to get ready to get off the train so uh, you know we'll take what we can and um, look at the bright side whenever we can but we've had a good a good time here so far we'll bring you guys along as we pull into uh, Union Station in LA in just a little bit okay. 